Hey kids, this is Ivan. How you doing? Well, had a great game last night, and I want to talk a little bit about the game, but also about uh, something that I've said before, and I'll probably say again. You know, when you're a game master, sometimes you end up uh, being the person that misses most of the game. In other words, you know, at the end of the game, you probably experienced less of that game than the players did, and it depends on the the day, and, and depends on you know mindset and what have you. Uh, I certainly had that experience last night, and you know, the neat thing about you know, doing something like recording a game on Hangouts and then, you know, putting it up on YouTube, you know, whether it's public or private, is you can go back and then rewatch the game. And, you know, during today, you know, I, I listened to most of the game, you know, off and on as I was doing all kinds of stuff, you know, including going to the gym and what have you. And it was amazing how much, how much better the game was when I watched it than it was while I was actually running it for me. And yeah, it just might have been you know the day I had. Um, and actually one of the players actually quipped that I looked more relaxed than usual. And I suppose I was. I pretty much just let the players um, you, you drive the bus, so to speak. And every once in a while I would interject something when I felt that it needed it or when something was actually happening in the world. But you know, I don't know if you've had this experience as a game master that you're kind of detached a little bit from gameplay because you're kind of looking at you know clocks like what's going on in the world when when is you know that so and so is going to do something at some point you know whether or not the players ever interact with that you know who knows but that's going to happen at this particular point so I, I had a couple little you know ideas of some people that I interjected uh, in the game it it turned out actually that I didn't have as much time to prepare for the game as I thought I did we, you know we we kind of actually um, postponed the game for a couple of weeks and you know didn't play and so the day that I thought you know the day of the game I figured well I got about three hours to really kind of firm up some ideas I've had floating around in my head just kind of you know jot it down on a, on a document and we'll be good to go and as it turned out like I got hired someplace um, or at least got a job offer so I had to you know, scramble around doing all this stuff you know in terms of you know uh, sending PDFs and stuff back to them which is great you know so uh, you know that's great but uh, you know it it uh, it took away a lot of that preparation time. So I just kind of had some bare bones ideas when we started, and that might have been part of it too. But I but I knew you know kind of some things that were going to happen. But I want to talk a little bit about the session itself uh, because it was much more enjoyable, or it was, it was much cooler than I thought it was. You know, ever run a game where you're just not sure, man, is this is this kind of dragon, or are they really enjoying this or whatever? And they all said it was great. So you know, and I, I agree. But afterwards, it's pretty cool. You know, they start out the session. This is going to contain some spoilers, so if you want to watch the game and you don't want to get spoiled, you know, or the, the stuff spoiled, you know, uh, don't watch this. But uh, there were some really cool parts of what happened. I'm not going to give you blow by blow. But essentially, you know, they, they, they end up in Berlin. Uh, they've just seen these four people, you know, this, this simulacra that Lee had made a while ago. The good Dr. Hans uh, made a simulacra of himself, and lo and behold, there it is in Berlin. It's there with Farmer Peitar Strauss, which is somebody that they encountered, which, you know, uh, in, in the first moments of the game, and, you know, it turns out that he might have some kind of, uh, you know, magical bent, you know, and there is Constable Bester, and also some guy they're not sure who he is. He looks like some guy dude it up to be like a monster hunter or what have you, you know, somebody like Jürgen, but he's got some kind of Lutheran symbols on him. They don't see these guys, you know, we, we kind of did a time skip for about a couple weeks, hadn't, hadn't seen them, and at that point, you know, I knew something that I was going to interject into the game, and they were going to encounter uh, some of these people. And, you know, uh, because of the way things went, I'm not going to be spoiling too much for the players. They're never going to know, maybe, why Farmer Strauss and why the Simulacra were in Berlin with those other two, unless, of course, they in encounter the other two again. But I literally have behind the scenes, you know, and the players discover this later on, you know, through uh, interaction with uh, the Simulacra, is that the, uh, the Simulacra stole... A Farmer Strauss's spell book, because Farmer Strauss is, in fact, a, a kind of self-styled, uh, you know, magician. Stole the spell book, you know, ran away, because he kind of has half the memories, or 30% of the memories of the good doctor, because the good doctor decided to make a simulacra of himself. He can make simulacra of other things, but he chose himself in that, that case, which is very entertaining. It was kind of like a, a, like a gift the player hands to the GM. I'm like, well, that's awesome, you know, this, this, <laughs> this ought to be cool. So, you know, he stole the spell book. I figured, what would he do? He would steal the spell book. You know, I'm not going to tell you why they happen to be in Berlin, but it made sense. That's what he might do because he's having these, you know, uh, memories of being a, a wizard himself. He, he knows that's what he's supposed to do. He's a little bit befuddled. He acts a lot like the good doctor, except he's a little bit weaker and clumsier, which is hard to believe. Uh, he's stolen the spell book. So Farmer Strauss has been looking for him. Farmer Strauss has no idea that he's a simulacra. So he sees the good doctor. And he starts running towards him with the intent to kill him and get his spell book back, or at least shake him down and give me my spell book. He sees Jurgen, 
he, he recognizes Jurgen. He, you know, he, he kind of sus suspected Jurgen of, of something, and so he believes he might be behind all this sort of stuff. He's running there. He casts a sleep spell. He drops, you know, Jurgen and Heinrich and uh, their their uh, kind of retainer, for lack of a better word, Otto. Just drop at that point. And Heinrich makes his saving throw. Heinrich decides that he is going to attack this guy with the intent of chopping off one of his hands because he believes that's what he's done. You know, is is waved his hands around and caused some kind of spell. He rolls really well, rolls incredible damage, kills the farmer. So he chops off his hands. He, uh, you know, cuts his femoral artery. That, that's a little fluff I put in there. So here's what happens. As the farmer's running past all these people on the street, you know, they're kind of, um, you know, almost falling asleep because I've kind of, you know, used that kind of mojo uh, that if you have a spell memorized, you can perform little minor things. So they're almost, you know, you're kind of shaking it off as he, as he goes by. The crowd goes in about 90 seconds from being ready to call the constables on Heinrich to all of a sudden realizing that Heinrich is a witch killer. And Heinrich has a great uh, charisma, makes a speech. Next thing you know, they're famous. I never could have seen this coming. This is not what I imagined might happen. I wasn't quite sure what would happen when they encountered these people, but that's not it. You know, and, and that's one of the reasons I love playing role-playing games, because you just, I love playing to find out, because you just never know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, if you haven't played in that manner, when, if you're just giving a script to your players, or just, you know, I mean, or in other words, presenting a situation, you kind of have a timeline, you know exactly what's going to happen, uh, you know, all the time, and they just run through it, you're, you're missing out. Because I never would have guessed that would happen. So next thing you know, the, the diff, a different guy, you know, Heinrich has a reputation now as a witch killer, as a witch hunter. Pretty interesting. Attracted the attention of some other people. They ran into some other people of note. You know, fast forward, they meet the simulacra. The simulacra is, you know, has, has stolen Farmer Strauss's spell book. There's a spell in it, Animate Dead, which they find out later on. And the the, uh, the simulacra is always rolling on the miscast table because he's just not, uh, you know, this is behind the scenes stuff that I was doing. He, he's just not very good at, at what he's doing. And I also did some some GM fiat. I wasn't always going to roll on the miscast table. I just said, well, he's already had some misfortunate things happen. I kind of figured out what they were. So in my mind, what's, what's going to happen is this simulacra, this is the other thing I kind of prepared, is, is going to start animating dead uh, or trying to animate dead. And we'll see, like, what, you know, terrible things happen as a result of that, especially if he miscasts. So, sure enough, he's animated some dead people. Somebody knocks at now. the You know, I never knew how was I going to introduce this. But now, of course, somebody from the neighborhood is going to knock on Heinrich the Witch Hunter's door because why not? I mean, he's the guy that takes care of this stuff, right? You know, so... They, they kind of run down there to see what's going on. There's this great scene where this party is entirely split. Heinrich is, is undergoing, uh, he has something wrong with him, where he's constantly rolling a saving throw, especially every day, and especially when he gets stressed. And if he fails a saving throw, he rolls on a little table and finds out, does he retain his personality? Does he get, get another personality interjected? He got this other personality interjected from somebody they met before. Why? Well, maybe they'll find out why that's, that's, uh, that's happening or, you know, why particular personalities end up getting interjected into his head. He's having this moment where he's not sure whether he should shoot Jürgen or shoot one of these zombies, because, in fact, zombies are, are coming up and, and trying to attack them. Jürgen is taking these zombies down, the, down an alleyway, trying to keep them away from everybody, doing nothing but parrying, and successfully, for the most part. He's, and, but he's, then he starts to take damage, and this gets interesting. Jürgen almost dies in this session. He, you know, he, he manages to get out of the back of the alley, but he takes some damage. And, you know, Jürgen has eight hit points. He takes a five hit point hit. He takes a three hit point hit. He's zero hit points. He is down on the ground. Heinrich decides he's going to try to drag him out of there. He loses initiative. The zombies, you know what? I went back and I looked in this rule book, and Jürgen should have died because I should have had them do max damage. So, you know, it's like a bad call in football. You know, it stands, so that's what happens. You know, I roll, I roll damage. I roll uh, two points of damage. You can see me kind of fumbling because I couldn't, I'm saying one, but I couldn't remember if he was at zero hit points or in negative one, so I'm trying to figure all that stuff out. And, you know, had I rolled a three or higher, you're going to die because I rolled a D6, you know. So he had a two-thirds chance of dying right there, you know, because you're at negative three, you're a goner in <laughs> Lamentations of Flame Princess. Heiner drags him out of there. It was great. So they get a freebie because I didn't didn't remember the rule. But uh, you know, if he died, he would have died. However, that's not the, that's not the cool part. The cool part is there is this scene with a doctor where he encounters a simulacra who has count cast invisibility on itself. It takes him a while to figure out as he's wrestling with a simulacra that it has to obey him. I went back and looked at the spells. It has to do whatever he says, and he's just not quite getting it. So it's a little comical, but at the same time, this the doctor has been slowly going mad as a result of his. 
uh, involvement with magic. And this is something that Lee has just been role-playing, and then I've kind of jumped on. The, this game right here doesn't say that's necessarily going to be the case. It, it does say that people that mess with the dark arts are, in fact, insane. But I left it up to Lee to, how are you going to role-play that? You know, because, you know, he, he read, he's read the book. And so I'm just kind of following his lead on what that's going to be like, and, and, and that's been really cool. So he's descending into madness. He's descending, you know... Uh, you know, he's just becoming more and more unhinged through his experiences, and there's this there's this really uh, gripping scene, you know. And this spoiler here, you know, he, he brings a simulacra back to to the house. Um, he's attending to Jurgen. He takes it outside, and he's trying to get rid of it. He can't dismiss it. There's nothing. I checked. There's nothing in the book. He can't just make it go away. He has to kill it. And so uh, he he uh, he thinks about it for a second, and he cuts its throat. He made, commands it to stand still. He kind of figures out that you can just tell it to do stuff and it'll do it. Uh, he almost commanded it to kill itself, but then, then he does that. And so um, commanded it to be quiet, to stand still. Didn't say a word. It just sat there and, and, uh, and died in front of him. It took, you know, it took a while for him to watch this thing die. And if you go and you watch that part of the video, um, I, I wish I put the time, I should, should put the timestamp here somewhere or, you know, uh, leave it in the comment or something on this or, you know, and put a link in the below, I should say. There's this part where you watch the other players' faces as, uh, you know, I described this, uh, this moment when the, the simulacra dies in, in front of the good doctor. Just, just all three of them, but just... And it, it's, there's just this silence because it was this really uh, intense, gripping scene as, as the doctor um, is convinced. You know, he keeps telling himself it's not real. It's just, it's, just a, it's just a construct. It shouldn't exist. And there's this moment, you know, where, you know, even afterwards he kind of descends into some maniacal laughter for a second. And the look on Lee's face is, is, is uh, priceless. Even though he's wearing an elf suit, I, I made him wear the elf suit after he posted the picture on Facebook and he was wearing that that day. So that's a whole different story. Um, but it was, uh, you know, I almost felt like I had to interject some levity in there. But it, it was a really gripping scene, you know. And I'm really enjoying the way that these three guys are, are playing the game and, and role-playing their characters. A lot of what happened, you know, in that game... Um, it was, you know, a lot of role play. A lot of times I just sat back, let them, you know, kind of, kind of role play their characters because right now they're confused. The characters are confused. They have no idea what's going on. You know, Lamentations of the Flame Princess doesn't, is, it doesn't have to be this thing where constantly the weird is happening over and over and over again. It shouldn't be. Uh, they are kind of dragging the weird along with them. <laughs> you know, they've done some things that have kind of, you know, caused some things to happen. So they're, they're, they're kind of a focus of, uh, you know, they be they become weird magnets, for lack of a better term. You know, um, and so they just you know, and they keep on making some decisions that kind of you know bring them right back into that. You know, the, the whole I, the whole thing when Lee created you know the, the good doctor creates that simulacra. You know, I I couldn't imagine this is how it was going to end up. You know, I, my intention was they were going to encounter those those two guys for sure. They were going to encounter Farmer Strauss, and they were going to encounter the simulacra. Those are the, those are the two things I I knew I wanted to have happen in that session. Um, just even if they was just in passing, I I couldn't have predicted the way it went. Uh, I couldn't have predicted that that Heinrich would have killed Farmer Strauss. Uh, I had no idea Farmer Strauss was going to you know TPK the whole party. You know, I couldn't, couldn't have predicted that's what was going to happen. That he was going to become a per person of fame, and I couldn't have predicted that the good doctor would have you know encountered a simulacra and and killed it in that manner. Just really really uh, gripping. You know, I'm still thinking about that, and it's just a great, uh, great role play, a great examination of those three characters. You know, as as they all wrestle with their um, their issues, and and Jurgen has also you know been brought low <laughs> by the zombies. You know, almost killed by the zombies, and still uh, you know a lot a lot of questioning. You know, of what's going on, a lot of uh, exposure to dark magic. You know, exactly the antithesis of what he was, uh, you know, originally doing. And here they are. His you know intention is to find some. Uh, you find some other uh, witch hunters, you know, they have a lot of stuff going on. So anyhow, I didn't want to, you know, talk about the whole game. There's some other things that happen, but uh, really neat and, and cool to go back and watch afterwards. You know, so if you haven't ever uh, done that, if you haven't ever played to find out, play to find out. But if you haven't ever, uh, you know, recorded a game in some fashion and gone back as a game master and checked it out afterwards, it is amazing what you can miss as you're sitting there behind the screen, so to speak, you know, keeping tabs on things and remembering, I need to interject this or apply this rule or whatever it happens to be. So, hopefully this video wasn't too long and rambly and boring, but I had a great time. I'm going to play some All-for-One Regime Diabolique tonight, which would be really cool. 
you know, sometime I gotta get I gotta get Eric Blow to like DM some dark places in Demogorgons. We should do the hangouts of that. But anyhow, that's it. I will talk to you later.